faces here uh, and some new folks as well. So um, I, I gave out a handout and there's a few more. And um, if you don't have one, you can maybe just look at a neighbor's. There's, it's nothing too complicated. So as Bill just said, what my hope is is to provide a snapshot of what's happening at the state level. So I, I titled this thing, The Talk on Capitol Square. So I work about a block away from the state house. And um, I was saying to somebody, a, a big chunk of what I do is lobbying. And so I took the liberty today of not wearing my, uh, my, my blue uniform. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so I go and I talk to all these different people. And it's sort of my job to try to figure out what's going on, particularly around budget and tax policy. But uh, in the process of that, you sort of learn what's going on more broadly in uh, state politics and policy. And so what I'm hoping to do today is take this hour, and I hope you leave and you feel like you've got a pretty good sense of what's happening around state government, state politics, and policy. So just kind of a, I, if you don't leave with sort of at least the top lines, then something will have been amiss. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm shooting for. Um, so let me just first do a sort of introduction, kind of tell you who I am and my, my bias, the way I look at these issues, the lens I'm looking at them through. Uh, and then we'll set a little context in talking to Bill. Uh, it's always a reminder. I know I was, you know, real involved at the city level for a long time, and um, I, I kind of like to, to joke, sadly, that a lot of people have a pretty good sense of what's happening at their local level, especially, especially sort of uh, civically engaged uh, folks like people who come to the community forum. Um, and a lot of folks have some sort of at least idea of what's happening at the federal level and an idea of how to respond to it. The state is this big thing in the middle that a lot of people don't know much about. Um, so my hope is, is that I'll give you a little sense of the context that at least we see things in um, over a particular the last decade or so um, that really informs what's happening uh, at the state level right now. Um, so then I'm gonna do a quick exercise. So I'll tell you that just the, the homework you'll have is there's these six issues in the top issues section and then seven in the just below the surface section. And um, you get three votes each on the top and on the bottom. I'm just gonna, after I do some context setting, I just wanna take a quick snapshot of the group and what you all would like to talk about so that I can focus my remarks. Because we could literally talk for an hour about every single one of these issues. So my hope is to go into all of them a little bit, but then the ones the group really wants to hear more about in more depth. So, um, so again, I'll sort of do a little more intro and set some context about what's happened in the state over the last decade or so. I think is relevant right now. Then we'll do a quick, uh, this voting to get a sense of where folks are at. Um, and then I'll sort of do a quick uh, overview of these major issues um, and, uh, and issues that are just below the surface that are listed here. Uh, and then we'll leave the, uh, about the second half of the time for just a question and uh, answer and discussion. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are people in this room who know more about some of these issues than I do. So hopefully I can at least just kind of kick off or provide the space for some more discussion about them. So is that, everybody follow me? Is that okay? All right. So, um, so who I am briefly, so again, yeah, my name is Gavin DeVore Leonard. I'm the uh, state director of One Ohio Now. And um, One Ohio Now is a coalition of 96 health and human service organizations labor unions and advocacy groups that collectively uh, are working toward uh, uh, ensuring we have enough revenue to pay for the public services that make our community stronger. So in layman's terms, that means we need to make sure we have enough taxes and money coming in from the federal government. Those are the two major sources, and obviously the money from the federal government is in its most basic form, tax money too, that those dollars that are coming in are ensuring that we can have roads and bridges that are up to date, that we can have public schools, that we can have uh, all kinds of investments that we think make sense for the common good. So that's our, um, our perspective. Um, and so I am really a generalist on all these other issues and could go pretty far into weeds on tax and budget policy. If that makes sense. So I'm, I'm here kind of a little bit outside of the realm of the normal things I talk about um, because frankly I know about a lot of this stuff and I ought to share it and it was a great opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to talk about things other than just tax and budget policy. Um, it, it so happens that tax and budget policy is uh, the biggest thing happening right now. It's the largest sort of uh, moving part in our uh, budget process and our uh, state policy right now, but uh, there are a lot of other things that are happening. So that's just kind of my bias. So we look at things through this lens of uh, wanting to ensure there are more dollars. And most of the uh, legislative leaders and governor 
uh, see things differently. The, um, we're the ones who generally want to see more revenue through taxes, and most of the uh, legislative leadership wants to see less dollars uh, through less taxes. So there's, um, just to be clear, that's kind of the way we come at things. And then, um, uh, just to uh, say again, the goal here is, is to do this snapshot. And, and the way that I'm gathering this is that um, every day there are a series of different clip services. So like I read the uh, pretty much all the major newspapers every day. Uh, I talk to a lot of other lobbyists, uh, interest group leaders, legislators pretty much every day. Um, and so this is sort of a, com uh, a compiled set of knowledge um, that when I, I, you know, I took the last few days and started kind of making notes to say, what are the top things that are either being talked about, or in a couple cases, I think we ought to make note of when they're not being talked about, um, but what are the major issues? So that my hope would be that if you would go to Capitol Square and you would talk to some, you know, an insider that's paying close attention to state uh, budget politics or state uh, politics more broadly, that you would actually have a pretty good sense of this is what's happening, that you wouldn't be missing any big issues. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm shooting for. That's not to say there are not other things going on, there are lots of other things besides this, but. This is the stuff that I think kind of rises to the top, particularly in the top issue section. So, um, so that's sort of the intro here. Um, so let me, uh, let me talk about uh, the context. So um, just so folks are on the same page, um, right now there's a Republican governor, Governor John Kasich, and then there's a, a House of Representatives that's controlled by Republican legislators. Uh, there are 60 Republicans and 39 Democrats. And then uh, in the Senate, also controlled by Republicans, 23 uh, Republicans and 10 uh, Democrats. My colleague and I were watching the Senate session yesterday, and we were sort of jokingly uh, uh, making our, uh, our guesses about votes before they came out. And I can tell you that all the votes yesterday were pretty much 22 to 10. Uh, one Republican wasn't there, so it was usually 22 to 10. Uh, so it's a, it's, this is sort of the, the legislative reality of supermajorities in both um, both houses, um, and, uh, and and so then let me just give you kind of the, the the markers that we use that we think really shape both the uh, the fiscal and the legislative uh, landscape because of um, because of their impact. So I'm going to talk about what happened in 2005 with some major um, tax changes. Then what happened in 2011 with a big budget that made some major changes, followed by 2013, this last year, uh, we had a budget that made some big changes, and then that'll set the context for where we are here in 2014. So 2005, um, does anybody know uh, how far the income tax was lowered, uh, phased in, we had a reduction of, anybody know? 20%. 21%, very close, 21%. Most of this is great. This is Great to be in a group of folks that are aware of this thing. Uh, so 21% income tax cut that was phased in, and then we also got rid of the corporate profits tax. We're one of six states in the country now that doesn't have a corporate profits tax, and we swapped in this thing called the commercial activities tax, made a bunch of other changes. The net of those changes was about $2.5 billion a year. So the reason I say this is a big context setting point is because when you make a change that affects two and a half billion dollars a year, well, you just made a big, big impact on a whole lot of other things that you could or could not do. That's you know major investment in public education, drastically reducing cost of higher education. That's you know massive infrastructure projects. That's a lot of dollars. Um, so 2005 was a big kind of turning point for state policy um, around fiscal policy, but more broadly around uh, the ability for the state to invest in things for Ohioans. I jump ahead from 2005 to 2011, um, not because nothing happened over six years, but uh, because the, the big change, next sort of big change happened in 2011. Um, I assume everybody's well aware of why that is. Uh, because of the housing bubble and the financial collapse, um, in 2011, a lot of folks knew it was gonna be a tough budget year for two really big reasons. The biggest one being the financial issues, and then the next biggest one being that we had just blown this big two and a half billion dollar a year hole in the budget because of the changes that we made through the tax policies that were enacted in 2005. And so in 2011, um, part of the reason that the final report came about was because we felt like there needed to be some, uh, some somebody saying, hey, let's try to balance this budget that we all know is gonna be tough, not just through service cuts, but also through raising revenue uh, to balance that budget. You know, you can fix a budget by uh, raising revenue, you can make cuts, or you can find efficiency. Those are the three things, and 
we were concerned it was going to be all cuts, and that's what ended up happening. So folks might have heard about billions of dollars in cuts to things like the local government fund and things like um, K-12 through education and higher education. There were some really big um, cuts that came down in 2011. So that's a big, a big moment. Um, for instance, here in Hamilton County, those two things, education and local government, added up to $222 million of, uh, of budget cuts uh, in 2011 uh, compared to the two, so 